wake up today and I tell you what, I'm just glad about it. I'm glad about it. The Bible says in Psalms 150, praise ye the Lord, praise him in the sanctuary, praise him in the firmament of his power, praise him for his mighty acts, praise him according to his excellent greatness, greatness, you hear me, greatness, praise him with the sound of the trumpet, praise him with the pastor and heart. Praise him with the timbre and dance. Praise him with the string instrument and organ. Amen, brother? Amen. Praise him upon the loud cymbals. Praise him upon the high sounding cymbals. That everything that hath breath, praise ye the Lord. Heavenly Father, we gather here today. Lord, we come in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Heavenly Father, we come today because you are a good God. You are a God, Lord God, that look beyond our thoughts and you keep supplying all of our needs. So Heavenly Father, as we come today to lift you up, Heavenly Father, we invite your Holy Spirit in. Heavenly Father, we ask now, God, Send down, Lord, the anointing upon this worship service. Heavenly Father, for you are good. Oh, God, and you are good. And, God, you are better. And, yes, God, you are even better than better. And, God, we just thank you. We give your name the praise. And we give your name all of the glory. Because you're better. worship service. Heavenly Father bless us throughout this day and we give your name the, the praise, the honor, and all of the glory. For it's in the name of Jesus and for his sake I pray. Amen. Amen.
Now time for children's church with all children ages 3 through 11. Please join me at the door. Committee will meet Monday, November the 5th, 2018, at 
2018 at 6.30 p.m. And the Pastor Anniversary Committee are Elder Tom Erskine, Elder Lawrence Jones, Denise Penway, Dorothy Barley, Mother Mary Hamrick, Linda Leifer, Charles E. Moore, Jalakia Russell, Aretha Surratt, Tanya Conrad, Navon Harden, Wilfred Mangler, Kim Pettaway, Elder Eddie Scruggs, Faith Doshe, Janaya Johnson, Mother Barbara Massey, Mother Tina Russell, and Mother Edna Sheraton, and Latrina Walton. And the point of contact is Ms. Bernardus Walter. Um, if you guys out there, I just call the names, kind of wave your hands so people will know you. <coughs> Prison ministry training will be held November 3rd, December 1st, and January 5th. For more information, contact Sister Beverly Peterson. Leadership and officer training for deacons, elders, and members has begun and will end on October 31st. The training will be in conjunction with Bible study. Life Run Chapel kickoff midday Bible study has begun. Join us each Wednesday at 11.30 a.m. Let your voice be heard on November 6th for the general election. Rise to the polls are available. For more information, contact Jerry Burnett with the NAACP 256-655-9330. The Blackburn Chapel and the CYF Ministry adopted James I. Dodson Elementary School back in 2017. They are asking the church family to donate non-perishable items. These items will be brown bagged and sent home with kids on Friday, November the 9th. The list of items requested are fruit juice, chips, fruit cups, fruit snacks, cookies, animal crackers, just nothing with peanut butter or nuts. Kindness is free, the effect is priceless. Blackburn. Blackburn Bridge articles are needed. Please send articles to Blackburn Chapel, I'm sorry, blackburn.bridge at yahoo.com. The weight loss team, eat candy in moderation for Halloween, walk two miles this week. October is Breast Cancer Awareness Month. As of January 2018, there are more than 3.1 million, 3 million women with a history of breast cancer in the U.S. There have been many treatment advances if diagnosed. Early detection, detection is best cured. Good morning. Although it's written on your program on the back, the Harbor State Committee would like to thank everyone who came out and participated in the youth explosion to benefit the Jesse McCord Scholarship. And we're especially thankful that you came out to join us today for our Harvest State celebration. I want to personally invite you to stay after for dinner. Dinner is being prepared in the fellowship hall, so please stay over and fellowship with us to celebrate Harvest Day. If you look around, you can see that we do have Blackburn Chapel polo and t-shirts. If you did not have a chance to order, to place your order, I will be placing another order probably in a couple of weeks. So you will have plenty of time if you would like to order a t-shirt. The more we order, the less the price. So I, that's what I would like to make sure. I'm going to have the order section open for several weeks so that the t-shirts would be more affordable. T-shirts ran about seven to eight dollars, and these are good quality t-shirts. So you will have a chance if you did not place an order this last time, or you need to reorder, I will announce that we the ordering um, session served for several weeks, so you will have a chance to order. So again, thank you again for all you have done for Harvest Day for this season, and this is on behalf of the chairperson, Ms. Brenda Lucas, and myself, Beverly Peterson. Thank you.
Please stay over and eat with us.
your goodness. Lord, we give you praise for your grace. We thank you for your presence in this place on today, God. We realize we can do nothing without you. And all good and perfect gifts come from you. Speak to us now, Lord God, out of your word. And we'll be so careful to give you all the praise you truly deserve. We ask it all in Jesus' name. Amen. I'm not going to disrupt her praise, y'all. That's somebody that know how good God is being. And I believe every chance we get, we ought to tell God thank you. Our text this morning is coming from the book of Genesis. If you can't find Genesis, I got some oil with your name on it. But go with me to the eighth chapter of Genesis. And I'm going to read verse 22 as our focal point text today. Genesis, the 8th chapter, verse 22. As long as the earth remained, seed time and harvest, cold and heat, summer and winter, and day and night shall not cease. From that text, along with reference and a few other passages in Deuteronomy and Joshua, the thought I want to use from that text is kept by a promise. Everything we do and everything that we are, it's been kept together by a promise. From Genesis all the way down through Revelation, the Bible is filled with promises from God. And as believers, one key component in our ability to live for God and to navigate our lives according to his perfect will and his perfect way is for us to identify and then properly live by the promises of God. All right. If you know Deuteronomy, we've talked about it before, and in Joshua, the children of Israel, they were on the precipice of the promised land. But you got to remember, they wandered for 40 years in the wilderness. And in spite of their faithlessness, and in spite of their stubborn disobedience, despite the things that they did when they wanted to do their own thing, they realized that they'd been brought by God and that God was still keeping them. So the beginning of Joshua, they are now almost ready for the promised land, but even though they've seen the fruits of the promised land, even though they surveyed the land, and even though they've already made preparations to possess the land, they still take time to reflect and to remember the promises of God. They remember the words from Moses that quickly reminds them that we didn't get here by ourselves. Do I have a witness here today? Keep in mind, most of them, by this point, most of the people that were getting ready to cross over don't remember what happened at the Red Sea. They don't know anything about being slaves for 400 years in Egypt. They, they didn't know about the frogs and the flies and the lice and all the other plagues of Egypt. They didn't know anything about God preparing and making a way for them in supernatural ways. So Moses had to remind them, never forget how you got where you are. You didn't get here by yourself. He said it was because of a faithful God. It was because God was always by your side. It was because God never goes back on his word. And as believers here today, he said, you got to remember, we've been kept by his word. Anybody know that you've been kept by God's word? He says, you didn't get here because you've been so holy. You didn't get here because you've been so good. Let me make that plain for y'all. We're not here in this church today because you've been so holy. You're not here today because you've been so good. Now the Bible says there is none good, no, not a one. You're not here because you're cute or you think you got it going on. No, you're here because God is faithful and because he's good, you've been kept by his word. 
Oh, that's a humbling thing for me right there, y'all. I don't know about you, but when I think about that, that makes me want to give God praise. That makes me want to join Mother Ben Jefferson and tell God thank you. Why? Because when I think about all the mistakes I've made, when I think about all the stuff I did wrong, when I think about when I messed up myself, but God just keeps on blessing me anyway. Oh, come on, somebody. I got to tell him thank you. Thank you, Jesus. Not because he has to. Not because I deserve it. Not because I've done him any favors. Oh, but he just keeps on blessing me and making a way in my life. Anybody know what I'm talking about? I could be in hell this morning. I could be in jail right now. I could be out of my natural mind. But oh, but the blood of Jesus. Oh, God. Excuse me, I'm sorry, but I, I don't understand how some people can act like they got it all together, act like they deserve it, act like they got things figured out. All I know is God deserves my praise. Oh, J.J. Harrison got that one right. He deserves my praise. He deserves my hallelujah. He deserves my thank you, Jesus. Anybody in here know that God has been good to you? And you know that if he hadn't have kept his hand on you, you wouldn't even be here right now. If you had not been brought by his word, if you hadn't been kept by his promise, he looked beyond my faults and saw my every need. The Bible said, I would have fainted had I not believed to see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. So we are kept by his word. And when you've been kept by the word, let me tell you something. The anointing of God will flow in your life. That's the second point if you take your notes. The anointing of God will flow in your life. When the prophet Samuel went to, went to Jesse's house to anoint and find the new king, Jesse tried to impress him. He, he tried to parade all his, his good-looking sons, all the, all the, the stout and, and good-looking boys he had. He brought out what he thought was best and, and what he thought was going to work. But what he perceived as valuable, listen to me, did not compare with the plans of God. The Bible says that when Samuel saw his older sons, because they were the ones that were not kept by the word, because they were not the ones chosen by God, the Bible says that the oil refused to flow. Y'all with me today? But when Samuel saw David, Come on, somebody. His father said, oh, he ain't nothing but a shepherd boy. But the God said, don't look at his countenance. Don't look at him on the outside. I don't look at people on the outside. I know what I got down on the inside. And what I got inside of God, help me right there. What I got inside of him is more than what you see on the outside. And because David was already kept by a promise, the Bible says that's when the oil began to flow. It didn't work on the older brothers. Hear me somebody, it didn't work on the ones that looked like they were more skilled. It didn't work on the more capable guys. But it came out on a nobody. It came out on an afterthought. It came out on this nobody all because he was kept by the word. Aren't you glad that when you kept by God's word, it don't matter what you look like on the outside. It don't matter where you came from. Don't matter who your family is. Don't matter how much money you have. Don't matter stand against me. That's a good place to get happy right now. That's why I praise God with everything I got. That's why I shout with the voice of triumphs. Watch right, because God chose me. He anointed me. He perfected me. And because he laid his hand on me, I owe him my praise. Anybody glad about it today? I know that I've been kept by the word. And when you're kept by the word, he says, don't worry. When you go against your enemies, don't worry about the things that seem too big for you to happen. Don't worry when you go against the Gerga shots and the Amorites and the Hittites. He said, don't worry about your enemy. Why? Because even though trials will come and it'll look like it's going to take you out, but don't worry or be afraid of them because no matter what they do with you, I will be with you. Anybody glad about that? Think about it for a minute. There's people on your job that's smarter than you, but God still promoted you. Come on, somebody. There's people that may be more qualified than you, but you supervising them. Oh, God, help me right now. There's people in your family that's older than you, but everybody depends on you. Why? Because you're chosen by God. You got people even in the church that are better equipped than 
than you, that are better than, than, than uh, look like they're better than you, but now you're leading the usher board. Now you're leading the committee. Now you're doing things for God's glory, not because you're better than them, but God's hand is upon you to do work for his kingdom. All because he's committed to loving you, and most of all, because you've been kept by our word. Anybody in here glad that you kept by our word? He said, I did not choose. You didn't choose me, I chose you. You did not get out of danger on your own. I saved you. You did not escape because you were so smart. No, I saved you. You didn't get out of bondage because you were tired of it. No, I saved you. God says, I brought you with a strong hand and a long arm. And when you know who God is and what he's done, when you know you're on the winning side, when you know who he is and what he's already done, it ought to change the way you praise. Do I have some help here today? Whenever you come into the church, one of the first things you ought to bring is your praise. Anybody know what I'm talking about? I almost wanted to shout the other night at that revival when Pastor Davidson started talking about praise and worship. Those of y'all that were there should have said that was Pastor Snodgrass because he was saying everything I told y'all, which was confirmation to me that God wants us to understand he deserves our praise. And when we learn how to praise him, miracles can happen. Things can change. Anything can happen when you get in the presence of God. Anybody know what I'm talking about? So let me help you real quick to help you understand what you need in order to praise God. The first thing you need, you need your Bible. Come on, somebody. You ought not come to church without your Bible in your hand. Right, the Bible is your weapon. And if you got an iPad, a phone, a Bible on your iPad, that's the only reason you should have your iPad. It shouldn't be to watch movies in the sanctuary, y'all. It shouldn't be to text somebody when you're in the sanctuary. No, it should be you and the Word preparing for the attacks of the enemy. Do I have some help here today? So you need your word. The second thing you need, you need your purse and you need your wallet. Why? Because you can't really worship God till you're ready to give him something of value. Oh, I know I ain't going to get much help right there. But you can't worship God and hold on to things you think are important. No, he said, seek ye first, oh God, the kingdom of God and all of his righteousness. And everything you need will be added unto you. That's the second thing you need. And then the third thing, you ought to bring your prayers. Anybody know what I'm talking about? Why? Because if God has been good, he's performed some things in your life, you ought to be willing to tell him thank you. God has done some things for you that nobody else could do. And every chance you get, you ought to give him glory. You ought to give him some praise. You ought to give him a shout of victory and a testimony to let somebody know. If it had not been for the Lord on my side, don't get it twisted. I might look good, but it's the Lord that's keeping me. It's God that made a way for me. And it's Lord. Jesus. Oh, God, help me right now. I don't need nobody else. Anybody know what I'm talking about? That's why the Bible says, make a joyful noise unto the Lord. All ye late, serve the Lord with gladness. Come before his presence with singing. Know ye that the Lord, he is God. He has made us and not we ourselves. We are his people, the sheep of his pasture. Here's my heart. Enter into his gates with thanksgiving. Enter into his courts with praise. Be thankful unto him and bless his holy name. You need a reason why? Let me tell you. Because the Lord is good. I said the Lord is good. I said the Lord is good. And if that wasn't enough, his mercy is everlasting. And his truth endureth for all generations. Anybody know? One thing I love about God, he didn't just start being good to me today. He didn't just start making a way for me today. He kept my mama. That's why she's shouting right now. He kept my grandmama. He kept my kids. He's keeping me right now. And I owe him my praise. Woo! God, help me right now. God has been blessing me all the days of my life. I am where I am only because God is good. Now listen to me a minute. Let me help you with something. You can't praise God like this. You can't really know how good God is until you go through something. Come on, somebody. Let me help you right now. In order to really know what he's able to do, you can't know it if you're always trying to pray away your problems. You can't know who he is if 
you trying to wish away your pain. No, sometimes you got to lose the job. Sometimes you got to lose the house. Sometimes you got to lose your limb. Sometimes you got to be sick all in your body. Sometimes you got to go to the cemetery. But I'm telling you that when God is with you, he will make a way and he will be right there by your side. How many people know God will stick closer than any brother? My God. And when you get in this place, I came to tell you, you're still being kept by a word. You're still being kept by his promise. As long as you keep your hand in God's hand, I am a living witness that troubles don't last always. Thank you, Jesus. So he said, I brought you with a strong hand and an outstretched arm. And when God has blessed us and you know his truth, now you got to share his word and help somebody else. That's point number three right there. Because remember, there is a generation going in the promised land who do not know who God really is. There is a generation that's walking with you now that did not see God perform miracles in their life. There's a generation right now, let me make it plain to y'all, that were not raised in the church like we were. There's a generation now that they're not going to have a choice whether they want to come to church or not. I didn't have a choice. I had to come to church. But their kids now tell their mama, no thank you. I don't I think I'm going to stay home today. There's a generation that know more about what's going on on BNT and MTV than they knew about Amazing Grace, how sweet the sound. Anybody know what I'm talking about? God didn't bring our ancestors through hard trials and tribulations for us to turn around and start killing each other. Come on, somebody, help me here today. God didn't let them overcome dogs and water hoses for us to walk the streets with our pants hanging down. They didn't go through all of that for us to go to the grocery store with our pajamas on. Come on, help me in here today. They didn't do all of that for us to listen to music that call our women whores and stinks, y'all. Come on, let's be real for a minute. They did not stand in the back of the bus and go to the back door and say, yes, sir, no, sir, no, ma'am, in order for us to disrespect the generation if we pay attention. Last week after service, Elder Hoyt came up to me and he, he was apologizing. He said, I'm sorry for bursting out with praise during service. I had to stop him right there and say, no, no, you don't need to apologize to me. Because to be honest with you, that's what church ought to sound like. Oh, I wish I had some help. Because when you know who God is, when you know what you know about God, when you know the power of his word, when you know what he's able to do, you ought not be able to contain your praise. Your hands ought to go up. Your voice ought to cry out. You ought to start waving your hand and telling God, thank you. Anybody know what I'm talking about? I think it's far too many people in the universal church today that have forgotten about the power of praise and worship. But I'm so glad there's enough people in this church that know how good God has been. We know God made a way for us. We know he brought us from a mighty long way. And I love the fact y'all don't mind helping me give God praise. Anybody know what I'm talking about? That's why we shout over here at Blackburn Chapel. That's why we have a good time almost every Sunday. Because we know God put food on our table. We know he put clothes on our back. We know he put money in our pocket. We know he made a way out of nowhere. And we've learned I'm not going to sit in his presence and not tell him thank you. Anybody know what I'm talking about? When you have a victory, y'all, you are not staying in silence. You got to let somebody know God is in control of my life. One of the things that really humbles me, I've been amazed by the people that have, been jo that have joined this church and have said that, let me, let me switch this real quick. I'm All right, yes, yes. By the people that have joined with us. And many have said they joined because despite living in a very untraditional world, our church is still somewhat traditional and family oriented. I've even had some people say to me that they're surprised with me being a younger preacher that I speak and teach in such a traditional way. Well, let me tell you something. I don't know if it's traditional or untraditional. All I know is the power of Jesus Christ. Oh, I wish I had some help right now. All I 
know it was good enough for my grandmother. It was good enough for my grandfather. It was good enough for my mama. It was good enough for me. So you know, as long as it's good enough for me, like Anita Baker said, I'm going to keep on giving you the best that I got. Because all I know is that greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world. And if God is on my side, how dare I be ashamed? I am not ashamed of the gospel of Jesus Christ. What's the power of God unto salvation for them that believe? How many know about God today? That is our victory. That is our great defeat over the devil. So I got to know it, and then I got to give it away. Because the more I give, the more God gives, God gives back to me. Anybody glad about it? Give God praise right now. That's the reason. That's the reason we can trust in God. That's the reason we know he's good for our praise. Why? Because he will do exactly what he said he was going to do. He said, just like I made a promise to Abraham. Come on, help me somebody. He said, I'm doing the exact same thing I said I was going to do. Anybody glad about it? Let me help you with that right there real quick. You do know that even though God promised Abraham, it didn't look like what God said. Anybody know what I'm talking about? It didn't look like it was going to happen the way God said. You do know that even though he initially promised him, he said, you're going to be the father of many nations. But he told him during a time when he was 90 plus years old and didn't even have a child. He said, I'm going to bless you, but it'll look like I'm not blessed. I'm saying, stay with me, I'm going somewhere. And then when he finally did get the son, when he finally did get the promise, you think God will leave him alone, but here come God saying, give me that which you have. Give me that blessing you've been waiting for. I want to see if you trust me enough to give it back to me. But how many know that if you trust God and you know that you're kept by his word, even if he has to, he'll have a ram in the bush just to see if you're willing to trust him. And when you do what God said, in other words, he will make a way where there is no way. Why he going up here with his, his sacrifice on the other side of the mountain, his blessing was already going to meet him at his place of obedience. I'm just trying to keep myself from getting happy because that symbolizes what I know about when you are kept by a word. When you are kept by a word, it doesn't look like you are blessed. But when God says you are blessed, no man can make you curse. Right now, Jesus, help me right now. I'm trying to get through this message, but the Spirit is trying to help me to tell you that when God says that he's for you, I don't care who says anything, they cannot stand against you. When the enemy comes in like a flood, if you learn how to praise God, he said, I will lift a stand against him. Because I'm right there by your side. How many know we got that kind of victory right now? Thank you, Jesus. So whatever the Lord has said in your life, he's confirming it in this text. He said as long as the earth remains, there's going to be seed time and harvest. There's going to be cold and heat. There's going to be night and day. There's going to be summer and winter. And last time I checked, all those things are still going on. So God said, if my word was good back then, my word is still good in your life. So if you learn how to sow a faith into my word, you will receive a harvest of my blessings. Why? Because my word is even powerful than my name. And if you stand on my word, I will make a way in your life. Anybody know what I'm talking about? Thank you, Jesus. If you know about Abraham, you know he was kept by a word. You know about David. You know, David was kept by a word. If you know about Joshua, Joshua was obedient, but he was still kept by a word. But also Jesus, come on somebody, he was kept by the same promise. It was the same word that marched him down through 42 generations. It was the same word and the same promise that let him die for the whole world to see. It was the same promise that nailed my Savior to the cross. It was the same promise that kept him from coming down and saving himself. It was the same promise that let him die wholeheartedly on that cross. It was the same promise that laid him down in a borrowed tomb. It was the same promise that kept him there all day Friday, all Friday night. It was the same promise that kept him there all day Saturday, all Saturday night. But let me tell you something about the promises of God. Just because it 
God praise right now. So every day of my life, I'm kept by a promise. Every day I get up, I'm kept by a promise. When I go to my job, I'm still kept by a promise. When I sit down at the table, I'm kept by my provider. When people get on my nerves, I'm kept by his word. And I have come too far to give up now. So because I'm kept, I'm going to cling to what I know works. And that's the power of Jesus Christ. Amen? Amen. Amen. God bless you. The doors of the church are now open. How many are glad to be kept by his word? Glad to be kept by his promise. Glad that you don't have to fight these battles by yourself. I did that part of it. I tried. Meant well. But I failed every time. And I'm so glad now that I failed. Because let me tell you what I found out. I found out there's failure in Tremaine. But there is no failure in God. And God has the amazing ability to take what looks like failure and turn it around and make it work for your good. You just got to trust him and know that you are kept by his word. So if I were you today and I didn't know for sure where I stand on this thing, I would come to him and give him my life right now. As this being a harvest day, you can harvest the blessings of the seed of your faith. All it takes is a seed and God has given us a measure of faith. And when you put that seed where it's supposed to be, that's when you reap the rewards of the promise. So this is your opportunity to come and grab hold of what God has reserved in your life. As the choir begins to sing, you can come and experience a brand new life. You can look back when God places your, his hand on you and open up your eyes and see that all the days of your life you've been kept by a word. Even when you thought you were struggling, yeah, it hurt, it was painful, it tripped you up, they talked about you, but God never took his eyes off of you. He never let you go. And he allowed you to experience the loneliness so that you can find out there is still a living even in the valley. And even in the valleys of your life, you are not by yourself. What a mighty God we serve. He deserves and I just want to thank you, Lord. Oh, thank you, Lord. Oh, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord.
to Pastor Snodgrass and the church family. Today we have Sister Natasha Lacey. She's coming for prayer for her son. And we have Sister Barbara Tatum, and she would like to join Blackburn Chapel Church. She would like to move her membership here to Blackburn Chapel Church. And then we have Brother and Sister Yarbrough. They are coming for a testimony and prayer. Amen. Let's give God praise, church. Says she just want to join our membership here at this church and she's coming to us from Union Hill. Is there anything you'd like to say to us? Thank you all for being here today. The devil tried to keep me home this morning, but I wouldn't let him. I just thank God for being here. Amen. Amen. Let's praise God for that. And when the devil tried to make you think and doubt yourself, tell him you were kept by a word. And you had an appointment with God this morning and he can't do nothing to stop what God has blessed. We are truly glad to have you today and already having confessed hope in Christ. Today you are renewing that covenant and coming into a new relationship with him here at this church. Our prayer is that God will continue to give you the grace, the strength, and the peace that you need to do everything that he has called and equipped you to do. Amen. I tell people all the time and I'm going to tell you, we're not perfect people. But we serve and we know a perfect God. Amen, church? So we just want to join our faith with yours and find out and watch what God is able to do. Amen? Amen. Officers and members, repeat after me. We, the officers and members of this church, we the members of this church. do now affectionately welcome you. Now membership and fellowship in this Christian household. We devoutly pray that God will make you happy and useful in this relationship, which you have assumed. After, the, after we give you the right hand of fellowship, they're going to come and get some information from you, and I want you to come see me after service. We want to help you find where you fit, because you have gifts, you have talents, you have resources that God has deposited inside of you, and we're a better church family if we can learn and grow from each other. Amen? Amen. Amen. So I want the choir to give us a verse of the song, and let's give her the right hand of fellowship. Let's encourage her, and let's welcome her to our church family. Amen. still singing, you all go ahead and stand. I'm just going to ask the choir, you can continue to sing, but just sing softly, because I know they have a powerful testimony that they want to share. Good morning, church family. Good morning. As you all know, uh, there was an incident this week involving an apartment fire, and unfortunately, we were part of that. I was in the hospital that morning and I was feeling sick that whole day and I just told my wife, I said, baby, I got, you know, I got to go to the doctor. I got to, something needs to be done. Well, she took me to the doctor and we had one of the best doctors I have ever came across. She said, son, I don't know what's going on with you, but I don't see anything. She said, so we just going to pray about this. So we prayed about it and we got through it. 
Well, we got home about an hour before the incident happened, and I'm trying to put something on my stomach, and it just wasn't working. And it was like, we're going to go lay down. Well, less than five minutes of that, our neighbor came at our door. We don't know what's going on, and he was like, we need to get out. It's a fire in our building. And God gave me the strength, y'all. I'll tell y'all, I was, I didn't feel like moving. And we got up and we ran out of that building. And I'm telling y'all this because, like I said, even when you feel you're at your weakest, God will give you the strength. enough for being there for our family. I called him, and I mean, he answered as soon as I called, and I told him, and I mean, he got us through it, and just loved ones, families, neighbors, everybody just coming together, and like you said, it's strength in number, and there is. Everyone just been so grateful to us. We lost everything, but with the clothes on our back, and the love in our heart, and the prayer that we have on bending knees, They came to church. They wanted to go to school the next day. They didn't want anything to hold them back. So through them, we all have found strength in each other to fight through this situation. And like I said, we just, I mean, we can pray and we can testify all day long, but our God, He is awesome and He is strength. Come on, y'all. That deserves our praise right here. We got to thank God right now for this wonderful, marvelous, powerful thing that He has done yet again. Amen. I thank Maurice for having the strength to share that because he's confirming what I was just telling you. Sometimes it's not until you experience what looks like loss that you're going to find out that you ain't seen nothing yet. And I can stand as a testament to God that the things you thought you lost, God can redeem and restore beyond what you ever had before. And because you are honoring Him, even when you feel like you don't have anything, you will be blessed and your household will be kept by His Word. Amen, church? Amen. And that's the kind of victory we have as we stand and believe in our God. So I'm going to pray with them and join my faith with them and also honor this request that Natasha has made. But this is a great time for us to come to the altar, y'all, and just thank God for what he has done and anything you might be worried about. This ought to confirm to you that you are already kept by his word and his promise and that nothing is too hard for our God. So let's come today and let's come in faith, believing in who he is and knowing what he's able to do and to give God praise even despite what feels like a dark place in our lives. Yeah. You can't truly praise God until you're in this place. Yeah. You can't truly thank Him until you know what He's able to do beyond your painful circumstance. But I know that God responds to our faith and that there is always purpose for pain. So let us come together now as I pray with those that have come. I'm going to ask Reverend Robinson to intercede for us corporately as we petition the throne of God. Father, our God, we come to Thee. We come to Thee because we know there's no other God to turn to. Because You are God alone, You're God by Yourself. You are God everywhere. The Word says that even in the water, in the fire, in the storm, you are God. And we are so thankful, so thankful for you being God. Thank you. Because without thee, we could do nothing. But we believe and have faith that we can do all things through you. Christ our Lord. Oh Lord, we come today. With thanksgiving and praises in our hearts. We just can't thank you enough. Oh Lord, we are thankful that we have had this hour to be able to come together and give your name all the praise. And 
Thank you for all your goodness. All your goodness. All your goodness. We thank you. Oh well, Lord, we come saying to you, Lord, that you have blessed us beyond measure. We have been blessed when we should have been, we thought, cursed. But, oh Lord, you looked and you saw that we had a need, that you was still in our life. Make no difference how low we had gotten, you were still there. And, oh Lord, when, you, when we realized that you were still there, strength, courage, and power. All that we need, you give to us. And oh Lord, we come now to help strengthen those that may be fallen, weak. Those who are having trouble. There's no problem too hard for you. And you are a troubleshooter. You can fix anything if we just turn it over to you. I ask you, Lord, to help them to stretch out on their faith. They got it. It's within them because they came down looking, hoping. And you're not short on your word. They came and we got the word today. Thank the Lord for the word of God being preached. We thank you, Lord, for thank you. the Holy Spirit that, 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 that assured that us that you still there. Even when the enemy is pressing us. We ask that you hold us. We ask that you able us to stand. Even when it's being said that you, we can't stand. Well, Lord, we ask you to bless these and all that they stand in need of. And then, Lord, bless all that I duty bound to pray for. My neighbors, my children, and my neighbors' children. Bless this whole world. Stand in the blessing of a need of a blessing. Able the whole world to come to see and say that yes, you are God. Help us, Lord. We know that you will, and we know that you're going to do it during that time. We just want to hold on and hold on. Bless those who are bereaved today. Bless those that are sick. Bless those that are healed. And bless them that hold it on to their faith. We'll be so kind and, and thankful to give you all the glory and love. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Sunday after the second week or whatever, but 
pastor was on vacation then, so he was taking his own appreciation. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, we, we did not want this occasion to, to slip by without uh, the church family showing the pastor some appreciation for what he and his family, uh, Reverend Ramesha, all means to the church. And so first I want to read uh, Jeremiah 315. And I will give you pastors according to my heart, which shall feed you with knowledge and understanding. And I got to say this morning, I, I, I definitely believe he fed us with knowledge and understanding this morning. And right now, if I can just speak for the church just a little bit, and, and, and of course, if, if, if what I say right now is not how you feel, you're welcome to grab the pastor after everything and you can tell him, but, but pastor, I, I just want to say, I, I don't think you can fully understand how much you are loved and appreciated here at Blackburn Chapel. You know, and, and, and we, uh, you know, we just have this token here for you. It's not much, because in no way what you guys do, you know, there's just no monetary, no whatever we can do to ever repay your remission for, for the love and the support that you give the members here at Blackburn Chapel. But we just have this little token for you, and we just want to say thank you, and we just want to say we love you, and we just want to say we really appreciate you and all you have done for us here at Blackburn Chapel. really did give me. I didn't know that's what he was going to do. I thought he was just making an announcement, but I, I'm, I'm close to being speechless, y'all. I'm really overwhelmed because you all don't realize how much we love you all, too, and this is a blessing for us to be able to be here and to learn and grow and become closer to God with such wonderful people. Uh, y'all are amazing, and I wouldn't trade anybody for y'all, so we all stuck together. Amen. Amen. But thank you. And she's in my office. I know she would echo that. Uh, but we are appreciative. My whole entire family, we thank God for you and for this opportunity to be with you. And also, he was right. I was on vacation. had a great vacation, but I was still missing y'all then. So that was a gift all in of itself. But we're thankful for your tokens of love. Amen? Amen. Amen. Um, were there any announcements or remarks from the Harvest Day Committee? Sister Peterson, is she still in here? I know Sister Lucas had to be away. There she is. Did you have any announcements or anything? I'd just like to thank everyone again for coming out, and would you bless the food? Absolutely. Again, a reminder, there's food that has been prepared for us on behalf of the Harvest State Committee. They did a wonderful job with the youth event a couple weeks ago, and we just want to celebrate with them today as we thank God for the great harvest that he's doing at Blackburn Chapel. I also want to take this moment to thank uh, the Unity Choir participants for participating in the Citywide Revival. I was blessed to see so many of y'all up there. And I am proudly able to say that Blackman Chapel was the only choir that had youth participants in the choir stand. Amen. That's something we should be proud of, y'all. So I'm very proud and thankful to all the musicians, directors who coordinated everything and worked hard to make our presence felt, and the ushers that participated as we celebrated their week. And we had a wonderful time during the revival, amen? amen. All right, any other announcements or remarks? All right, have we been blessed today? Yeah. Amen, amen. Well, let's share those blessings with somebody else and let somebody else know and let the devil know too. We're kept by a word and we're kept by God's promise, amen? Amen, amen. amen. God bless you.
God, we thank you today for your power, for your presence, and for your promise. We thank you for loving us enough, Lord, to keep us by the power of your word all the days of our lives. We thank you for this Harvest Day occasion and this Harvest Day committee and all that was done to remember the great harvest we have in our lives because of you and who you are. We ask you now to bless the food that has been prepared. Let it be nursing for our physical bodies and bless the hands that have prepared it as we eat fellowship and love one with another. Now may the saving grace of a once dead, buried, but now risen Savior rest, rule, and abide in our hearts now and forever. Let us all sing together. Amen. 